thank you again, everybody, for taking the time to join. Uh, this is a webinar that we have been looking forward to doing for a, a while because we are going to be getting into um, some very uh, specific details on what we are looking for uh, to collaborate and uh, work with you all in the industry to help build out the physical space for the Cold Chain Innovation Hub, which is being hosted at TESTA, and which is actually being uh, prepared right now. Uh, we are uh, working with TESTA and we're looking forward to working with you all to actually build out and supply equipment, training, experts, um, knowledge, uh, really anything that we can all uh, think of together to help make this a really, um, really exciting and innovative space for the industry that can really set the stage for sustainable cold chain technologies to be adopted uh, in the country, which we know are our uh, top priority for, for everybody um, in the Philippines right now. So uh, let me go ahead and get started and tell you a bit about the short agenda we have for today. So we're only going to have a short webinar. This is just the one hour. We're going to start off with the project background just to give you all who are joining us uh, for the first time uh, context and the, the background for this project and what it's all about. And we're, that is going to be uh, delivered by our project leader, Gilda Garibay. And then we're going to go for our we're going to go into our call for industry contribution where we're going to be going into the venue overview, the floor plan and the layout, some specifics on the equipment and the technology we're seeking, some of our preliminary ideas and, and uh, thinking that uh, we have already put into uh, this um, this space and also some uh, things we're looking for in terms of training materials and experts. And then finally, we're going to get into our Q&A. Uh, where we would like to open up the floor to you all who are very interested or who have joined us and have shown interest in uh, working with us to contribute to this project. So we're really looking forward to that part as well. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to make one quick announcement. We have an upcoming event uh, that we actually have just decided on. It's going to be on June 9th on Wednesday, 9 a.m. Philippines time, where we are going to be having our official technical training workshop series. We've done one before on commercial refrigeration. We've done one on industrial refrigeration. And now we're very excited to put together one on advanced technologies for transport refrigeration, which is uh, an area that we that is a very important part of the cold chain uh, logistics process. So going from commercial food retail to industrial and cold storage to transport refrigeration, we're going to have some very exciting and interesting presentations from speakers that we are preparing uh, right now. And uh, we'll, we'll tell you a little bit more about that. But just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, sign up for our newsletter uh, at this link uh, to make sure to get updated. We're going to set up the registration and send that uh, out all, send that link out to you all to join uh, and register. It's, it's free to attend. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, so let's get started with uh, just a few slides and a little bit of information on our project background. Gilda, you are with us right now. Uh, can you hear me, Gilda? Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Go ahead and uh, take it away. Okay, then. Thank you, Devin. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gilda. I'm the project leader. So for the newcomer or new people with us today, I'm going to give you the background of our project and for all our friends and partners that have been with us since the beginning. I'll just keep reminding you what this project is all about. So uh, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization is implementing a project in the Philippines called Global Partnership for Improving the Food Cold Chain in the Philippines. But for short, we call this Food Cold Chain Project in the Philippines since it is a long title project. <laughs> it is funded by the Global Environment Facility or JEP amounting to 2 million US dollars plus co-financing by other uh, institutions amounting to around 25 million US dollars. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DNR is our government partner, while the other executing partners are SHECO, uh, the TESDA or the Technical Education Skills Development Authority, and other financial institutions, both local and international. So the goal of the project is to identify, develop, and stimulate the development of low carbon, energy efficient refrigeration, innovation technologies, and business practices in the Philippines for use throughout the food cold chains 
while increasing food safety and security. Through the project, it is aiming to establish a global partnership. That's why we are here today calling you to help us between the public sector, the private sector, and financial institution for promotion of investment and support of best available energy efficient design technologies and practices transfer. The project will concentrate on the comprehensive transformation of the commercial, industrial, and transport refrigeration system. Overall, the proposed project was designed to address the following. Number one, impact of refrigeration of the global warming through the emission of refrigerants and through energy consumption resulting to greenhouse gas emissions. So we are all feeling now the impact of climate change. So we are here to sort of mitigate it somehow. And then number two, food losses due to inadequate cold chain equipment, which is the Philippines is very guilty of, is affecting both our farmers and consumers. Adequate, fresh, and safe food are critical to our country that is home to 100 million people, especially now in our present uh, situation. So, the project will achieve such objective through the implementation of four substantive component and associate outputs. Number one is the policy and regulatory assessment on the use of low carbon and energy efficient technologies within the food cold chain. This is under the responsibility of the ENR. We have a good uh, uh, activist, activities now going on with this. And maybe later on in the coming months, we could give you more update with these policies that we are working with. And then number two, awareness and capacity development capacity building on the use of energy efficient, climate friendly, and self safe alternatives in the food cold chain. This is under SHECO and TESTA through the cold chain innovation hub. And number three, technology transfer and establishment partnership among key stakeholders. Also, this is under SHECO and TESTA through again cold chain innovation hub. And while the monitoring and evaluation will be done by, uh, by the UNIDO. So, uh, what is Cold Chain Innovation Hub? This is the reason why we are all here today, but uh, this is been, will be further elaborated later on by Jan, but just to give a quick uh, uh, background on this, the Cold Chain Innovation Hub is the official platform of the project. It will serve as the project's central ecosystem of technical resources, training, knowledge sharing, and stakeholders collaboration. It is expected that through the CCI have new technologies made available in the country, partnership between key stakeholders established and financing scheme, which is very needed to make this all possible to develop bankable investment project put into practice. Of, uh, as mentioned, TESS has been selected as the national entity to host the CCI have at its central office located in Metro Manila. However, because of the present way situation, CCA Hub is concentrating on its virtual platform, but you will learn uh, on, on the next minutes that we have a very good uh, plans and this will be happening soon. So just uh, stick a while so that you'll know more. So let me share to you what we have done so far. So we have, uh, uh, okay. So anyway, uh, we have, we have uh, webinars, we have, uh, learning materials in the CCI Hub uh, website. So, so please uh, subscribe to the CCI Hub website for knowledge material and updates on events. So again, uh, good afternoon. I'm so happy uh, that we are all this afternoon. So after, uh, I'll call again uh, Devin for uh, the next uh, part of our program. All right, just working out this uh, system here. We'll start in a few hiccups, but thank you, Gilda, for that, um, that presentation. And uh, now I'm going to call on Jan, who is going to be telling us uh, a little bit more in detail um, what things we're looking for with this call for industry contribution webinar. So Jan, go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much, Devin. Uh, I'm pleased to be here with, with everyone. I will just put my slides up. Uh, so thank you everyone again for joining. Uh, this is Jan, I'm the head of the Global Partnership and global partnership is precisely what we will be uh, talking about today. So uh, some of you, uh, those of you who joined our previous event, uh, you were uh, able to see the first sketches and uh, the sharing of the concept and the vision uh, behind the, the Coach Innovation Hub, the actual facility. And today we would like to dig much deeper 
in terms of the facility, its use, and the equipment uh, that would be uh, put, in, uh, put in place, and reach out to the industry. Many of you have already been uh, in touch with us over the last year. Uh, some of you have already presented the, uh, the survey questionnaire, the results, and your willingness to contribute. So today we would like to be more specific and to continue this, this outreach to the industry with very specific uh, update on the technology that we are looking forward uh, to uh, receive for the project. So without uh, any further ado, I will uh, start with the venue overview. So Cold Chain Innovation Hub Philippines, uh, it's a showcase for low carbon energy efficient food cold chain technology from farm to fork. This is really what is the concept about. The pictures on the right are some of the first sketches that we have, uh, that we have uh, prepared based on the, uh, the, the actual physical space that is available uh, for the project. It's the ecosystem of technical resources, technology promotion, knowledge sharing, and stakeholder collaboration. Stakeholder collaboration is really the, the word that we would like to highlight in this, uh, in this sense, because uh, it's, it's really the global industry getting together to help uh, elevate the, 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 the state of the uh, cold chain, food cold chain, and really bring the latest technologies and expertise to the table. So first of all, I would like to again uh, introduce or uh, introduce TESDA, Technical Education and Skills Development Authority. I believe uh, they are uh, an extremely important uh, partner of the project and the, the right uh, set of expertise and skills and uh, the task force. Um, focusing on training and education, the governmental agency tasked uh, with this particular uh, important topic. So we're very happy to be partnering up with TESDA and TESDA will be hosting the, uh, the Culture Innovation Hub facility, also responsible for its operational and, and for its uh, longevity beyond the, the, uh, beyond the project itself. So we very much looking forward to uh, working closely with the uh, team at TESDA. TESDA and the, the location that was uh, identified for the Coach Innovation Hub, it's actually the regional training center, uh, which is located in close proximity to, the, to both the airport as well as the uh, seaport, which can be very convenient for uh, having the technology shipped to the ground as well as for the uh, visits of the international stakeholders. So a very convenient location in the center of uh, the uh, Manila. Now, uh, let's have a look one more time at the campus. So this is the test uh, campus and on the light on the left uh, upper corner, you can see the uh, CCI hub, the building that has been uh, offered and dedicated to the Coach Innovation Hub to host the, the facility, all the functions. It's within the uh, Regional Training Center, National Capital Region. So the, the building itself is uh, located as a part of the training center. It has uh, a very suitable access. There is a parking lot, so uh, there's no problem with shipping larger equipment as well. Now let's look at the uh, facility itself and let's talk about the technology to be deployed. So first of all, uh, the layout of the, the center. On the right, you can see the, the highlighted uh, proposed uh, culture innovation hub area. The area itself, the building has a of some 480 uh, meters squared. Uh, then there is a parking area and uh, quite a plentiful access to the, to the building from different directions. The, the building itself has a very high ceiling, so again, suitable for larger equipment. There is three wide doors that can, uh, you know, we can uh, provide the, the access for the technology uh, that is, that is uh, I would say, uh, not standard, uh, sub, uh, up standard uh, size. The length of the building, 32 meters. So again, we have a plenty of space to, to work with. There are two floors uh, that uh, I will introduce in more detail shortly. So this is the layout of the ground floor. You see uh, there is a three rooms, a training room one, training room two, cold storage room. And there is a workshop and exhibition area. So we will introduce each of these rooms, but uh, the whole floor would be uh, available uh, to basically be accessible to the industry, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, technicians and uh, anyone from the industry and, and from the academia to really receive training, training to have a hands-on experience, to be monitoring uh, the technology, the performance, and to really experience the whole journey that uh, will be prepared. Now, uh, second floor is more of administrative use. There will be a business meeting room. There will be office uh, administration office of the Coach Innovation Hub team. 
and there will be a multi-purpose room would be referred to as a room with functionality of, of VR, uh, virtual reality sets and, and similar. So this is still to be determined in more detail. The, uh, going back to the uh, ground floor, uh, the training rooms, the classrooms, the, the smaller rooms, they are uh, each about 50 to 60 meters square with uh, fairly high ceilings, uh, 3.6 meters. The, working, uh, the workshop and exhibition area is, is 300 meters, so again, uh, quite plentiful for uh, the, uh, the purpose that is intended. Now, uh, this is really the main part of what we would like to discuss today, equipment and technology to be, to be, uh, to be uh, part of, the, of these function rooms. So the first off is the cold storage room. In the cold storage room uh, indicated uh, on the map, uh, you see that uh, we, this, this, this place would be uh, having uh, running equipment. There will be equipment providing uh, cooling uh, on a different temperature ranges. And uh, the, it's basically one of the rooms that would be accessible to the industry to have uh, an access to live running equipment, including all the me measuring, uh, maintenance, uh, installation, uh, different sorts of training. So in this particular room, uh, we would like to, or the first iteration or the first plan uh, to equip this uh, room would be with two uh, particular uh, temperature ranges functions. One is the cold room, medium temperature, food storage. The other is a freezer room, low temperature, food storage. Now, this, this is a first iteration of this, of this room. However, uh, the, the functions of the room and the setup and the different technology to be introduced is really also depending on the response from the industry. So this is the first iteration when we introduce the idea of what could be a part of the, uh, this particular room. But of course, we are, uh, we are uh, flexible and we can adjust based on the, uh, the response from the industry. So uh, in order to have a cold room and a freezer room as a part of this uh, first uh, facility, a room, then of course, we would need um, access to a proper insulation and proper paneling. So this is one of the opportunities for the industry to, to cooperate, to collaborate with the project is to uh, provide uh, suitable paneling for this for these room. Uh, also, of course, it's important to have an access to the roof to, to have really all, all, uh, all different sites and direction access to the facility, uh, to uh, see the piping, to be able to access all the components that are part of the system. The code room uh, without uh, the cold storage area, it would be uh, a, a medium temperature. We are looking for a CO2 condensing unit uh, powered uh, cold room. So there would be a single evaporator unit cooler inside of the cold room, outdoor condensing unit located uh, just outside of the building. The room size is about 17 meters square. The room temperature, target temperature is about one degree. And we estimate the cooling capacity needed uh, is about 4.3 kilowatts. So this is suitable for small type of CO2 condensing unit, which is available on the market by several manufacturers. So this is an opportunity for, for the industry uh, from uh, different parts of the world to, uh, to uh, get, get in touch with us. Then uh, the freezer room uh, located in the same uh, room would be a small size, two by three by two. Again, we are looking for the, uh, the panel link to prepare this, uh, to prepare this room and uh, similar, similar requirements, I would say, to the previous one. This particular freezer room would be, uh, would be on a minus 20 degrees uh, Celsius temperature. Uh, the cooling capacity needed is about uh, under two kilowatts and the operating temperature is minus 20 degrees. So we look uh, for uh, an R290, R600A uh, hydrocarbon solution, uh, meaning uh, this is a monoblock type or plug and cool type of equipment, uh, all in one uh, type of body that would be fitted on the roof of that uh, actual freezer. So uh, in this case, we would like to have uh, the, uh, the R290 hydrocarbon uh, type of unit uh, to, be, to be providing the cooling to the freezer room, again, with access to all sides of the freezer for a training uh, purpose. Now, uh, this is, uh, we are now moving to the second room, which is a training room number two. In this case, again, we are talking about uh, a facility which running equipment with uh, 
access to different uh, systems, different type of showcases. This is more, I would say, focusing on the retail applications. So we would have different kind of showcases, uh, different configuration, plugins, uh, direct expansions, uh, plugins with what to do, and so on. So this is a bit of uh, what, what we would call a retail experience uh, a room, again, accessible to the industry and to the uh, visitors uh, for the purpose of demonstration, training, uh, maintenance, and so on. In uh, this uh, room, uh, we would have two or several setups, actually. The first setup is the open type uh, CO2 uh, direct expansion uh, showcases, remote type showcases. It would be either uh, linked to another uh, condensing unit, or it would be a larger capacity unit uh, that would be providing the cooling to both of these, uh, both the showcases and the code room. So this is another opportunity for the CO2 outdoor condensing unit that would be providing the cooling to a remote type uh, showcases. The second uh, set of showcases would be uh, R290 uh, or hydrocarbon based uh, showcases either for a freezer application minus 20 degrees, also medium temperature applications around zero degrees. And uh, here the, we have the option to provide a plugin, a simple plugin or a what to do or a combination of the two. So uh, should there be a system with what to loop, of course, uh, the dry cooler would be part of the system as well. Plugin systems, so uh, in to complement uh, the, the setup with a remote type and what to do plugin large showcases, we can also uh, locate a plugin uh, freezes or medium temperature uh, cabinets, uh, water coolers and freezes in the same space again, to kind of complement the uh, retail uh, experience from the point of view of technology available today. So this would be the low temperature freezer setup. And again, this is a kind of indicative in terms of the possible size and type of the equipment. Here is a sketch of how this uh, two function room could look like. Uh, as you may remember, we have described the cold storage uh, facility and the freezer. The first to be uh, powered by the outdoor condensing uh, CO2 transcritical unit. The freezer to be ideally uh, cooled by the uh, by the R290 uh, unitary, uh, you, basically a plug-in system that is uh, located on the uh, on the on the roof of this uh, small freezer. Then on the left side, uh, you can see uh, the training room number two. The right side is the CO2 remote type showcases. On the left side, we would have space for the RT90 showcases. Again, this configuration is, is indicative. We can adjust the layout. We just want to demonstrate that there is enough space uh, for several of these, of these showcases to be demonstrated, again, to provide this, this uh, retail solutions uh, overview uh, when it comes to natural refrigerants using the food cold chain. So this is an uh, indication. Again, this can be rearranged depending on the response from the industry and technology that would be available. Power supply. Uh, as many of you know, uh, in Philippines, the standard is 220 volt, uh, 60 hertz. Depending on the technology that would be uh, available, uh, we might also have to be able to set up or provide the higher voltage three-phase three -phase, uh, power supply. So that's something that will be determined but uh, we see this to be a standard, uh, one, of the, one of the standard when it comes to preparation of the facility for a larger equipment to be demonstrated. Now we are moving into the third uh, room uh, that we will be uh, discussing today about. And for us, this workshop and exhibit area is really uh, a space when we can have a combination of different uh, modes there can be live or exhibit only systems. There can be part of the systems. There can be components. The purpose of this room to showcase, to exhibit, to educate, to increase awareness. So this is a journey from farm to fork, from uh, ranging from small plug-in type equipment to large industrial systems. Of course, we are not able to uh, provide uh, enough space and power to, to have a running industrial refrigeration systems. However, there is um, quite common at the trade shows is to display a model and to demonstrate it in its functionality, its functionality. So we have a quite large space to work with. 
which uh, should be uh, an experience for the industry, for the end users, for other stakeholders to really see what's out there when it comes to food culture and technologies, which of these technologies are available today, how they work uh, when it comes to training, maintenance, and so on. So many of this, uh, of this equipment can be running as well, but uh, fairly small systems in, rather than the large ones. As I mentioned, this is the demonstration of farm to fork state of the art sustainable food coaching technologies. And it can be uh, audio visual interactive uh, type of, of exhibition. Uh, think, of, think of a trade show uh, with uh, different technologies on display, different uh, audio visual equipment available, uh, models, uh, monitors, interactive media uh, components, uh, and so on. So there's quite a large variety of, of, uh, of display or products technology that could be deployed. Just to name some of the, uh, some of the examples of the uh, equipment and products we'll be looking to uh, receive as contribution from the industry, system components. So uh, we talk about heat exchangers, valve, compressors, all filters, uh, uh, anything that uh, is basically necessary, of course, to, to run a refrigeration system that can help uh, the, the purpose of increasing the awareness and providing the, the access to the technology. Tools and materials, leak detectors, filling station, insulation, paneling. Again, all of these are important to creating a sustainable and efficient food coaching infrastructure. Scale models, as I mentioned, uh, some of the uh, equipment that is part of the, this industry is, is uh, fairly massive. So uh, we are not uh, necessarily asking for a large ammonia CO2 cascade systems to be, to be donated, but uh, that can be a system that demonstrates its functionality, can be a model uh, that is really representing the, the, this, this, this type of equipment. Okay, uh, so, so far we talked about the different uh, coaching chain technologies, but it's not just the technology, there can be a, a lot of the important activities are, are around the training training of the industry, training of the technicians, training materials and access to the experts. So we are equally uh, interested uh, to receive the, uh, the uh, attention or receiving the intent, of, uh, intent to collaborate with, with the industry to provide material uh, for training. Training materials, uh, to be specific, uh, we'll be covering topics, uh, again, based on uh, natural refrigerants uh, suitable for food cold chain. Uh, and these, the, the main topics I would say are quite known in terms of, uh, in terms of training necessary to be handled, to be, to be, to be increasing the, the, the availability of these technologies in the country. So specifically speaking, uh, managing high pressure of CO2 transcritical systems, flammability, safety design, RT90 uh, systems, uh, automatic controls when it comes to ammonia. So we are looking for dedicated uh, training courses and materials to help provide this, uh, this, this know-how. Uh, in general, it's about safety, it's about installation, it's about high efficiency, maintenance, operation. So anything that can help uh, bring the, the right knowledge to this, uh, to this platform is, is very welcomed. Now, uh, again, what can be the form of such contribution focusing on training? We are talking about online tools and software. We can, of course, uh, also uh, receive uh, printed materials, video tutorials, certified courses. Uh, these days, there's quite a lot uh, going on, uh, not offline, but online as well. So we are looking into deploying uh, technologies based on uh, virtual reality argumented reality uh, eventually. So we are quite open to, to be receiving some of the, the latest innovation in this space as well. Experts. Uh, without experts, uh, we wouldn't really get um, very far. So uh, it's not the technology only, it's the experts and the technology that make uh, the change possible. So we, we are very uh, open also to be working with industry and different stakeholder groups, academia, uh, contractors, training institutes to offer their expertise in terms of human resources, either live or, or virtual, of course. So uh, this is open to, to be on the ground, to offer a training courses that can be scheduled under the project, 
to really help again uh, address some of the uh, some of the uh, let's say the, the the gaps when it comes to handling the latest uh, technologies and uh, when it comes to increasing the, the the capacity or the capacity building for the food coaching in Philippines. So there are different modes of of possible uh, involvement of the industry, and I would say there is there is a place for every stakeholder who, who mean to be to be part of this. What are some of the important criteria? Of course, there are many to mention, but just to highlight a few, practicable and suitable for Philippines, right? We are looking for technologies that can be deployed on the ground that are, are suitable, that will be uh, helping the local industry to, uh, to, uh, to advance uh, when it comes to efficiency, sustainability. And of course, also uh, there's many aspects of, of of these technologies, reliability, uh, access to uh, training and support. So there is a commitment in a way needed from the, from the industry to, uh, to, uh, to be part of it. And then we hope that the technologies that will be part of the food cold chain, the, the, the cold chain generation hub in the Philippines are there. They are very practicable, very practical, and they are ready to be deployed in the country. And we are here only to accelerate the process to provide the uh, access to the technology to have the hands-on experience, to demonstrate the training, to, uh, to uh, secure the access to all the different components so that the industry can really uh, help increase the, its awareness about uh, these solutions. So readiness to scale, produce, and distribution. So again, this, this goes back to the whole, the whole food cold chain industry in the last 10 years has developed significantly. And we believe that now is a good time to bring that attention uh, to Southeast Asia, to Philippines, and to help to make that uh, to make that large, uh, big step forward to bring these technologies to the ground. And Food Coach Innovation Hub is there to to serve this purpose to really help accelerate this this introduction of the latest technologies. Why contribute? Uh, again, there are many uh, different. I would say many companies out there who look into developing the markets, the new markets for their businesses will recognize the opportunity to work with uh, the official, basically to work with the international community of stakeholders on this sustainable initiative. Uh, this project is, is uh, under the UNIDO, uh, of course, umbrella. We work with the local government and important uh, Filipino institutions. So to be recognized as official partner for the project brings out, I would say, a lot of uh, international uh, visibility. Uh, the technology that will be provided will serve for the training of the local industry and local technicians. So that's, that's I believe, a very important aspect. And of course, this, this whole initiatives help create the market for these technologies. So we believe in, uh, in proactivity. We believe that um, the industry is, is eager to have an access to these technologies and to, these, uh, to, this, to this expertise. And this, this initiative will help uh, kickstart this this uh, whole new market in the in the country, and not only on the technology and training level, but also on the level of financing and access to uh, basically uh, getting getting uh, to the table the other stakeholders that are very important for uh, for realizing this this uh, this this the goal of the project. So with that, uh, thank you very much for your attention. We'll be now ready for uh, questions, and I will now. Give it to back to Devin. Thank you, Devin. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we're back, and uh, thank you, Jan, uh, for the presentation. Uh, so the three of us now we are going to be here. We really want to. I mean, the reason we we want to put put on this webinar and and have you all join us today is we wanted to have your feedback. We wanted to be available, make ourselves available for any live questions and answers. So. Let me just start off. Uh, we can. Uh, I see that we have received a number of questions from from Cesar, Mr. Cesar Lim, who has been a previous uh, presenter at our at our conferences. So, um, Cesar, uh, let me turn on your microphone right now. Uh, we have you on, and no, uh, Cesar, could you just tell us uh, what 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 was one of your main uh, main questions you wanted to to uh, have answered? Because there are a number of them here. We can answer yeah, them later. Actually, but what was one of the, the main other things on your mind? already answered by. By Jan during his presentation. What I want to do is help. Uh, why not put up a five metric ton uh, tube ice maker, which is some using ammonia. It's small, yeah. compact, so that we can have also an ammonia system 
And instead of using evaporative condenser, we use uh, air-cooled condensers so mm -hmm. that uh, it will be just like a plug and play. We don't need water treatment. So this is this is an interesting question. Um, it's it's about having the the ammonia refrigeration ice equipment that's smaller and it can be plug and play, so we can have it at the facility. Um, let me throw it over to Jan, who might have a, a little bit better uh, idea here. Jan, what, what do you think? Thank you for thank you for the question, uh, Cesar, and, and thank you for for the the uh, opportunity to to talk to you about this. So basically, we had the reason we have not uh, listed specifically uh, ammonia as part of the cold storage room and training room one is simply that usually ammonia comes uh, with the larger industrial refrigeration systems or the very tiny hotel uh, absorption type of of the uh, fridges equipment, which we not really consider to be uh, the the target sector for the project. So uh, ammonia, again, I would say not very common to have a fairly small uh, plug, and, uh, plug and play type of equipment. So should there be technology like that available for ice machine or similar, and it can be fitting into the, the concept that we have introduced, of course, we are interested to, to uh, get involved and, and you know, discuss uh, in, more, in more detail. Now, uh, again, the ammonia industrial refrigeration is a very important part of the project. And we would definitely like to uh, represent the technologies that are available today. This can be either part of the, uh, the, the workshop, the, the, the exhibit area, when we have a fairly large space. Some of the equipment uh, can be displayed there. It doesn't have to be operational at all times. But again, very interested to hear more about the project in terms of its performance, uh, size, availability, and so on. I will jump into the other questions as well. Uh, I see the... So this is uh, somehow relevant, right? The cold storage room, uh, hydrocarbon split type. The cold storage room would be uh, a, not a split type, it would be a, a unitary system. So uh, a, some, a complete system that is located on the roof that is air-cooled. Uh, that's why we, we don't plan to have a split type uh, hydrocarbon system. Uh, that's not very typical. However, for the retail technical training room number one, we are considering to call for uh, a plug-in R290 showcases that are water loop. So in this way, the, the heating is being rejected outside of the, the building. Then I uh, look at the other question. A transcritical for triplical application would be a good idea for this app. Uh, thank you again for this comment. Uh, we believe so. And uh, as, as we know, CO2 transcritical has come a long way and there are more and more uh, systems available for any, uh, any ambient uh, temperatures. Uh, recently, there are also uh, condensing units uh, equipped with adiabatic uh, cooling that can be suitable for this type of project. So again, we look forward to receiving the, uh, the, um, the responses from the industry and getting uh, involved in more detailed discussions. Uh, Devin, off to you. Okay, uh, perfect. Yes, so Cesar, I hope that uh, that helped answer some of these questions. And yes, we see here, you send a message that says Ashray Philippine chapter is willing to help. Uh, you also say that your your consultancy, Kilojoule consultancy can uh, help with the training as a lecturer. So yes, that would be very, uh, very uh, interesting for you to have uh, to work with you on that as well. So yes, we'll be in touch with you. Uh, so I'm going to address uh, some of these questions here. Uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew, I believe from Australia, who is working with the uh, CO2 transcritical systems um, and deploying CO2 transcritical in Australia. Uh, Andrew, thank you for your question. You say, can you define the actual audience needs more clearly? Um, let me give you a, a chance to, to clarify that uh, a little bit more, just so we make sure we understand your question. Uh, I'll turn on your microphone now. Uh, Andrew, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you very well. Yes, a uh, long time no see and uh, good to have you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, could you um, no repeat your, your question one more time for everybody? Yeah, it's really about who's going to be, who's, who's really going to be using this, the facility, you know, the actual, the actual audience, you know, is it uh, small scale? uh production? You know, is it? Uh, do you have some idea whether it's uh, you know, pig farmers or, um, or, uh, you know, food, food storage people, uh, food production, you know, some big mango grower, what, you know, what is it that we're, who, who's going to come 
don't just say, you know, oh, it can be anybody because, you know, the reality is uh, lots of these ideas stand up, but unless there's a real clear audience with a value proposition for them, you know, yes. they don't, they don't really fly very well. Yes, uh, no, loud and clear, we hear, I, I hear you perfectly. And um, so let me just give a, a little bit of a comment here and maybe I can throw it off also to Jan and Gilda. Um, but we know that for this physical space, this physical space that we're hosting at TESTA, we, the, one of the first targets we are trying to reach are actually the uh, technicians and the engineers who will be working on these systems because one of the main um, results we want to have here is we want to have these technicians trained so that when the technology is deployed, um, that it can be sustained as it grows in the future. Um, but also we, and, and the reason we also define the farm to fork food cold chain is we are trying to communicate that we are looking at the food cold chain as a whole. So we, we don't want to say just anybody, um, but we also want to say that we are looking at sustainable cold chain systems from post-production, from the farms and the, and the, and the, and the meat and dairy uh, farmers, all the way through transport, people that operate uh, cold transport and also to retail and uh, cold storage. So we want to tackle it as a whole, um, as an entire cold chain and, and communicate it in that way. And we want end users to be there as well. Um, Jan, let me, let me throw it over to you as well. Um, what, what, what do you think uh, about this? Thank you, Devin, uh, and thank you, Andrew. Good to hear from you. As Devin explained, this project is there to serve the, uh, the, the industry as a whole, the, the all sectors of the food coaching. However, we have identified, uh, I would say, the most burning uh, problems or challenges on the ground, and they are usually linked to the post-harvest facilities and uh, the transport. So I would say it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the smaller facilities and, and small farming groups that are in the need on finding a solution. So uh, when it comes to end users, this is the audience that we would like to pay uh, uh, more attention to. However, the retail sector and the uh, food cold storage uh, sector as well, um, there, is, there is a gap when it comes to training, when it comes to available uh, technologies, maintenance, know-how. So again, the hub is to serve to increase this, this fundamental knowledge about the new technologies that are linked to all solutions, all natural refrigerants to be deployed in food coaching. By this, this is, uh, I believe, uh, the most important step to establish this, uh, this, this um, access to this, to this know-how. So uh, then the, the end users that will be part of the project they are ranging from large cold storage facilities to small farming groups and, uh, and retailers, independent retailers, a large chain. So, uh, the, the answer really is, is wide ranging when it comes to the end user groups to be, to be uh, benefiting in the end uh, to this, from this project. I will also uh, jump into the, your, your, your uh, earlier question, which is about the uh, support when it comes to pocket costs, shipping, commissioning, load integration, installation. So uh, again, this is not something that we can already clarify 100%, however, uh, currently, we are reaching out to the international uh, stakeholders, uh, international industry. We are looking for uh, securing uh, partnerships uh, in May and June when it comes to equipment to be provided by the manufacturers. The functions of the hub is we would like to, from our end, we would like to help provide the, uh, the installation, uh, we will have to help uh, provide the, of course, the, the platforms that will be then offering the training for the technology and so on. I'm uh, not sure we will be able to really secure the, the shipping cost, but when it comes to the technology being on the ground, that's the part that would be uh, very likely handled by the Coach Innovation Hub. However, I have to add that this is a case by case, we would have to see what uh, is really, you know, depending on the on the equipment as well. Some of the equipment is really not uh, much of an issue when we talk about small plug-in type of, of units. Some of the equipment uh, could be larger and then the complexity is, is of course much higher. So this this is case by case, we'll be uh, evaluating, we'll be getting in, in touch with, uh, we'll be getting involved in detailed discussion with, with all the manufacturers that, that reach out to us. Okay, perfect. Um, yes, thank you, Jan, and thank you, Andrew, for your question. 
So uh, let me uh, bring up uh, Mr. Eduardo. Uh, Sterla, you have your hand raised and you have a question here. Does TESTA currently provide courses and or certifications for HVAC and our professionals in the Philippines? Um, Eduardo, let me just uh, let me just get you on microphone just so we can hear you and uh, have a little bit um, more uh, clarification there. Uh, Eduardo, can you can you hear me? Hey, Devin, I can. Yeah, how can Perfect. you guys hear me? Yeah, thank awesome. you for joining us. Um, yeah, so yeah. could you um, maybe in introduce yourself uh, just really quick and uh, tell us your question? I'm Eduardo. I work as a business development manager for Unada Motors. So we make AC high efficient motors for uh, propane and uh, flammable uh, refrigerant applications. And I would like to understand basically the core of my question is um, how do we do you guys expect the CCI hub to be used? Is it something that um, uh, Tesco uses, uh, let's say every semester or inside their courses for refrigeration or certification? Or is it something that you guys appear to be for events and uh, use in a more sporadic fashion? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Um, let me just uh, say that I, you know, I believe um, maybe Gilda would have a, a good answer here. She's in close in touch with, with Testa and maybe Jan uh, would want to throw in a little bit here. But we know that one of the end results we want to have with this project is um, a, a, a certificate, sort uh, of trainers who are have been trained and will be able to train the rest of the industry in the Philippines. So a group of trained professional local technicians that will then have ongoing trainings and ongoing courses uh, for the rest of the technicians and, and students who come into TESTA to learn about the new sustainable technologies. And uh, so that way this will be ongoing in the future and not just a one-off. Uh, Jan, do you want to add anything here? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Devin. Uh, it's important to mention that one of the reasons that TESTA was selected as the project partner is precisely because they can then secure the continuity of the, of the Culture Innovation Hub by offering an integrated uh, curriculum courses on these advanced technologies for food cold chain. So uh, there is a long-term strategy behind the project. TESDA is playing a key part in uh, building uh, the curriculum based on uh, the new technologies uh, that will be introduced under the project. And that's, uh, again, the reason that we are reaching out to the industry to also offer uh, its expertise, uh, its experts, to work with the with Tesla and, and with the project on, on basically helping to create the, the curriculum that will be then available for the industry uh, after the project uh, concludes as well. Okay, uh, great. And uh, Rigor, uh, let me get to get to you, Rigor from Zudek uh, in the Philippines. Uh, I was just speaking with you just a little while ago. So um, let me get you on uh, a microphone. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for uh, joining us today. And uh, yeah, if you could tell us just a little bit about where you're um, coming from and uh, uh, what question you had. And uh, let me get you on microphone now. Uh, Rigor, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Devin. Hi, Is thanks for joining. Yeah. All right, uh, basically my question is would be, uh, of course, our company would be uh, contributing towards the uh, development and uh, advancement of technology for our stakeholders, especially here in the Philippines. So uh, yes. my, my, basically my question is, what will be the target duration uh, for this exhibit? Uh, because of course, there will be cost involved in, in, in bringing in like even just scale models from, from our principles um, outside uh, to the Philippines, so uh, we just like to know more about uh, the the time component for 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 this uh, for this project. Yeah, perfect. Target duration and Jan, I think uh, you can have uh, you can help out here. Thank you again uh, for the question, Arigor. Good to hear from you. Uh, the word I would like to to put forward is flexibility. We understand that depending on the equipment, it's not always possible to simply uh, provide, donate the equipment for a permanent exhibition. So we are quite flexible. There will be a equipment, small equipment that will be donated, will be part of the facility. There will be uh, a larger equipment that will be running uh, as a part of the training rooms and the cold storage. Then for the actual, you know, the actual exhibition area, 
Uh, we are quite flexible. We understand that some of the technologies can be displayed for the period of a few weeks or a few months. We can organize trainings dedicated to these particular technologies. There can be a time schedule developed for uh, a different larger equipment that uh, cannot fit inside of the, uh, of the workshop, can be located outside. And again, it can be a training program created. So even on uh, even providing the equipment on, on some temporary basis is perfectly fine. And we do understand that some of the large equipment uh, that is uh, fairly expensive, of course, uh, cannot always be provided uh, for permanent uh, exhibition. So this is case by case. We are quite willing to, to, uh, to listen to what uh, the needs of the industry are and to accommodate this more. Actually, having some kind of uh, a temporary exhibition, let's say uh, three months, each would be very suitable because this way we would be able to uh, access a more wider range of, of technologies to, to provide the, the training, hands-on experience on. So uh, very much welcoming also the temporal exhibits. I may just take another question from uh, Ms. Marites Lissink. Uh, thank you very much and good to hear from you. The question is about the, with regards to the display cabinets for the training room, do you expect the units to be working systems using CO2 R290? or dismantled units to be able to show all parts? So this is, this is a very good question, and we are actually looking uh, for both. Now, uh, the, the presentation of the cold storage room and the training room is precisely about having an equipment that is uh, running and providing the cooling so that the industry can have a hands-on experience and uh, experience the maintenance and uh, train on these systems. So these would be running uh, systems standard uh, technology that is that is being uh, available in uh, retail stores then for the uh, the exhibit area we can have models we can have cut throughs we can demonstrate different components so uh, this is this is i would say different slightly different uh, purpose but uh, both of these type of equipment is welcomed and either it can be on a permanent or temporary basis Okay, perfect. Yes, uh, Mary Tess, thank you for that question. And uh, let me get to Mr. Uh, Federico. And your question here is about getting involved in the education and uh, training, uh, especially coming from the academia, uh, academic sector. So uh, Mr. Federico, let me get you on, on the line. And uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah, you may be muted, uh, so see if you could unmute unmute your microphone, and then we'll be able to get you on. Yeah, hello, Devin. Devin yes, yes, hello. Uh, yeah, th thank you for joining us. Uh, could, could you tell us, uh, int introduce yourself uh, just very quickly, and then um, tell us a, a little bit more about your question? Yeah, um, briefly, very briefly, I'm part of the academy now. So we are looking at uh, some, uh, say, improvement in our curriculum. Say, can this be yes. part of uh, the course, especially on a graduate level where we offer the, a business course? Could this be part, say, of an elective or a formal subject, etc.? Has there been a model introduced by uh, some countries related to this? Yes. Um... Let me uh, let me see, Jan. You, would you be able to uh, to help with this uh, this question? I I, I think um, you might not understand your question. I can. Uh, thank you for the the question again. Uh, from our initial discussions with Unido, the the uh, the main uh, implementing agency, is uh, that this project is first of its kind uh, in Southeast Asia. And depending on, uh, of course, on, on the success of the project, the idea is to replicate this, uh, this idea uh, beyond Philippines to other developing countries. So uh, we are not aware of a similar type of project uh, to, be, to be already taking place, but the idea is, of course, to replicate this, uh, to create uh, these this models elsewhere, not only in Southeast Asia. Now, the Cold Generation Hub is, is focused on focusing on Philippines and is based in Manila. However, we believe that the, the, the benefit will be, will be uh, reaching uh, beyond Philippines. So this is, this is something that remains to be seen. Uh, working with academia will be one of the important uh, targets as well. Uh, academia and, of course, the training institutes will be welcomed, and this will be open platform for others to, to join. And that's why, again, uh, working with us is very exciting. 
Uh, Gilda, feel feel free to add. Uh, I think you're you're very closely working with both Tesla and, and of course the Unido uh, team. So, uh, would you like to add anything, please? Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, definitely, since the project was not only concentrating on the technical side. Uh, there's a part of the project that will focus on the business side, on the financing, and also with the policy. So the academia, uh, we could we could uh, access or we could assist the project in terms of the policy research, in terms of what's going on in the sector, because we're all tackling that, uh, that because we will do this project in a more sustainable, and then the impact will be great on the industry and in the Philippines as a whole. So there's a lot of things to be, uh, to be done, and we are all asking your contribution on this project. So again, you can con all contact us with all the things, uh, the details of the project. It will give you more, just uh, contact me on the other side. As, as again, uh, Jan uh, will be concentrating on the uh, technology side, but the other components will be on the business, on the policies, uh, things like that. Okay, great. Thank you, Gilda, and thank you, Jan. Um, we don't have any more incoming questions here now, um, but I just want to reiterate, uh, if you have any last questions, please go ahead and submit them now. We ha have just a few minutes left here, um, but I will go ahead and wrap things up for now because uh, we're, first of all, we just want to say thank you for everybody, uh, to, to, to all of you who have joined us today. Um, and also we are very much looking forward to getting in touch with you, uh, getting in close touch with you over email. We're going to provide our, our contact information. Uh, we got just one last last question here from uh, Meritas. I'm going to uh, bring this up right now. Just to confirm, supplier contribution is free and the exhibition area is free in return, right? Uh, go, go ahead, Jan. Uh, thank you again for this following uh, question, uh, Meritas. Uh, basically, yes, we, we are not, uh, of course, we, we are happy to uh, work with the industry out there that is uh, looking for uh, this cooperation uh, with Culture Innovation Hub. So based on the response that we'll receive, uh, we'll be then engaging with, with, with uh, all, uh, all uh, industry players. Now, uh, if I understand the question correctly, then of course there is there's no fee uh, that we would be asking for from the industry to be uh, able to participate in the project. We are now uh, transparent in transparent process. We are opening up this, this opportunity towards the industry. And again, we will be uh, awaiting the response from the industry and we have been receiving uh, some of the inquiries already since uh, the beginning of this year. So uh, there is no fee when it comes to placing of this technology. It's, it's rather the opposite. We would like to uh, provide uh, a facility that represents all different technologies across manufacturers, across different concepts to really have, uh, to really create the, the access, uh, a place, a hub, right? when the, in, the industry can, uh, can come and spend a day or two to really understanding all the, diff all the different technology op uh, options out there. When it comes to food coaching, they can uh, see the technology up and running. Uh, they, can, uh, get, uh, they can interact with the experts either in person or live or via some different virtual platforms. They can uh, tour through the, through the exhibition space to again see the different solutions either in model or on component level or running systems or simply uh, exhibit systems. There, uh, there will be an audio, video, audio, visual uh, technology that is providing access to the farther information. So we are, you know, this is wide ranging uh, opportunity for the industry. And uh, we will be again, uh, excited to, to, uh, to receive the, uh, the, uh, the response from the industry and start a dialogue about uh, creating these partnerships. Uh, with the industry and equipping the uh, the old uh, facilities of the Coach Innovation Hub with the latest uh, state-of-the-art uh, technology for food coaching based on natural refrigerants. So I think this is a very exciting opportunity for, for the industry. It's a first-of-its-kind project. And, uh, you know, last couple of years, maybe just a more personal comment, but it's been a couple of years since we are hearing uh, that uh, Southeast Asia are not much happening. It's too early for uh, the natural refrigerants, you know, the, let's say the state of the art technology to be, to be, to be placed. And uh, I know this is general comment uh, across all, all sectors. Of course, there is a lot of natural refrigerants technologies already based in, in, in industrial refrigeration and so on. But still the industry says it's too early for Southeast Asia. And we believe that this project with participation of, of, of the global community, uh, the global industry can help 
accelerate this transition from the existing uh, old technologies to more efficient, more safe, automatic controls, uh, the sustainable uh, coaching technologies that are available uh, elsewhere. So we hope that this project and the platform with uh, the global participation can help accelerate this change and bring, uh, bring the access, enable the access to these technologies to the know-how to the experts. So all these aspects will play an important role, including the financing, the training, uh, training of the trainers. So there's, there's a multi, multi uh, components multi-level components to this to this uh, story and, and as Gilda mentioned the financing and policy audit uh, regulatory is all, all important part of it um, okay. Debian. oh yes go ahead Gilda I get a question from Slack maybe I could share it um, actually it's from one of our attendees the question is uh, when is the target date for this? He is asking regarding the target for the contribution. So maybe we could update them on the status of the CCI space. Yes, perfect. Uh, go ahead, uh, Jan, let me give it over to you. Oh, thank you, Devin and Gilda. A very good point. So basically, where are we today? Uh, the facility has been assigned. Uh, TESDA is working actively on preparing uh, the facility for the equipment to be shipped in. So uh, our intention uh, with this first uh, more specific call for contribution, uh, reach out to the industry, is to start a dialogue with uh, the, the industry that is willing to, uh, to be part of the project. So in May and June, we would like to initiate this dialogue on, on uh, all fronts. Uh, we would like to uh, then put in place the partnerships uh, by the end of this quarter, by the end of June. And this is not a final deadline. This is an ongoing process. Uh, we welcome the companies who are proactive, who will act uh, you know, on early basis. And we understand that this is going to be ongoing process over the next, let's say 12 months. But uh, there's also limited space when it comes to certain type of equipment that we are looking for. Uh, so uh, first come, first uh, served. Uh, let's see how, how things go. There is opportunity for proactive uh, companies to be part of it. Of course, we want to uh, balance the the whole exhibit across the across the wide ranging uh, uh, number of solutions and uh, businesses out there. We are not preferring any uh, of the manufacturer out there specifically. This is an opportunity to showcase the latest technology for food coaching based on natural refrigerants. So we would like to uh, create a very representative sample of these technologies. That's why we talk about CO2 transcritical. We talk about RT90. We talk about ammonia. We can talk about air and water uh, refrigerant, even though their application in food coaching is somehow limited, maybe uh, with the exception of the uh, air cycle for very low temperature applications. So again, we would like to create a very uh, representative sample of these technologies. And again, uh, the, 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 whole, the whole workshop, the, the exhibit space will evolve. There can be a temporary exhibition, uh, there can be a, training containers, there can be industrial systems exhibited, uh, there can be uh, all sorts of type of equipment to be, to be you know, part of the coaching and innovation hub for, for several months to create, uh, we can help create the training courses for the industry to access. And, you know, so again, and again uh, the flexibility is, is, the, is, is important for to, to leave out there. There is no specific deadline. However, uh, we, we are excited to put the first partnership in place in May and June, and we'll be announcing this partnership on the project website, uh, and uh, we'll be uh, having another of uh, this kind of webinars to basically provide updates on, on the facility and on the technology that has been already contributed and uh, the technology that we are looking for to be uh, supplied. All right, thank you, Jan. All right, guys, uh, thanks, thanks again uh, to everybody joining. Uh, I'd just like to let you know, let me just uh, share my screen here one second. We'll, we'll wrap things up now. And um, just to let you know, we will be sending out all of these uh, slides, the whole presentation in uh, the, the full presentation to you. Uh, we'll be posting it on our website. Uh, if you're signed up for our mailing list, make sure to sign up for our mailing list so you get all these updates. Um, as well as the, the recording of this presentation we'll have up and we'll let you know when that's up too. So you can uh, go back and check it for reference. Um, you can also reach out to us directly um, through our uh, email addresses listed on the website. 
lastly, I just want to also remind you just one last time, we have our upcoming event on June 9th, Wednesday, Advanced Technologies for Transport Refrigeration, where we'll be going in depth into the technologies, the, the latest state-of-the-art sustainable technologies that are being used for transport refrigeration, namely, um, you know, vans, trucks, trailers, containers, intermodal containers, reefers, um, this type of technology, where it's going to be in the future, what applications it has today in the Philippines. We are um, uh, working on securing the uh, speakers for this now. We have, uh, we're excited to announce that we have Carrier, Carrier Transit Cult, who has uh, signed up. And uh, we're getting uh, several more uh, speakers uh, lined up, and we'll be announcing these details in the next few weeks. Um, Jan, Gilda, thank you again, and thank you to all our attendees. Uh, we have our contact information here for Jan, Head of Global Partnership. Um, thank you again for uh, attending this webinar, and we are looking forward to uh, keeping in close contact with you over these next few months and uh, keeping you updated on, uh, on the progress of the facility. And um, most importantly, the uh, impact that we're going to have on the uh, industry in the Philippines. Um, uh, we're looking forward to working with you all together on this. So thank you again. And uh, we'll stop this uh, webinar now. Uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.